somebody stopped me in Collins Street the other day and said, hi, Mel. I looked around, I couldn't see anyone I knew, but there was a young man in an Air Force uniform. And he said, it was me. I came here as an infant, as a refugee, or my parents were, and as I got older, the family decided that somehow I should try and repay Australia. And it was decided that one of us should join the armed forces. You're never going to get loyaler or better citizens than somebody who have been welcomed with open arms, who are fleeing terror and know their lives and futures are very much at risk in their home country, but then they're welcomed when they come to Australia. I still meet Vietnamese who say that when they're billeted in Adelaide, for example, when they first get to Australia, they'd find there were toys for the children, clothes for the children, ready and waiting for them. They weren't in razor wire detention centers. They could get a job, they could go and buy a cup of coffee, and they were part of the community virtually from the moment they came here. And that was the Australia that we should be, ought to be. I, I made a, and, and this was relatively shortly after the white Australia policy had been resolutely buried. And I thought a large scale immigration program or refugee program out of Southeast Asia, wasn't only Vietnam, Cambodia and others were involved, meant the death knell of the bigoted, narrow, stupid views that were present in that earlier and younger Australia. And uh, I, was, I, was, I made a speech in 1980 saying that this was a victory that had been won for all time. Well, you know, as it turned out, that speech wasn't really very accurate. It wasn't true because it only takes one person willing to scratch the redneck nerve, willing to do the wrong thing, play a race card, play a sectarian card, and you can arouse a great deal of opposition to a decent, humane, and open policy. There was a, a, a at the time of Tampa, the government was headed for defeat. The polls were against it, it had nothing running for it, but then it seized, it took a gamble, it played the race card, put a squadron of fully armed SAS troops onto the Tampa, and in a sense, the rest is history. I spoke to a senior member of the Labour Party at the time, I said, why don't you play for the middle ground? Why don't you stand up for your principles? Why don't you do what most of your members want you to do? And this guy just looked at me and said, you don't understand. Howard has ripped so many redneck votes out of the Labour Party, we're not going to let him rip any more. And since that time, the two parties have competed for the redneck vote. And truth hasn't mattered, honesty hasn't mattered, reality hasn't mattered. The hardship of people fleeing for their lives has not mattered in that particular game of competition. And the question for all of us, I think, is how can we turn it round? How can we get back to that much better Australia?